The GX4000 is a video game console that was manufactured by Amstrad. It was the company's short-lived attempt to enter the game's console market. The console was released in Europe in 1990 and was an upgraded design based on the then still popular CPC technology. The GX4000 shared hardware architecture with Amstrad's CPC Plus computer line, which was released concurrently. This allowed the system to be compatible with the majority of CPC Plus software. The GX4000 was both Amstrad's first and only attempt at entering the console market. Although offering enhanced graphics capabilities, it failed to gain popularity in the market, and was quickly discontinued, selling 15,000 units in total. James Harding of the Times said that the console was promptly outgunned by the 16 bit Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. It failed the cardinal test of entrepreneurship, stamina. Launch After months of speculation, the GX4000 was officially announced along with the 464 Plus and 6128 Plus computers at the CNIT Center in Paris in August 1990. The system was launched a month later in four countries, Britain, France, Spain, and Italy, priced at £99.99 .99 in Britain and 990F in France. Software was priced at £25 for most games. The racing game Burn-In Rubber, a power pack, and two controllers were bundled with the machine. Initial reviews of the console were favorable, with CVG calling it a neat-looking and technically impressive console that has an awful lot of potential at the very low price of £99." But while impressed by the graphical capabilities, they criticized the audio and controllers. Ace Magazine came to a similar conclusion, stating that the system "...puts the other 8-bit offerings to shame bar the PC engine." A marketing budget of £20 million was set aside for Europe, with the advertising focused on selling the GX4000 as a home alternative to playing arcade games. The tagline for the machine was, Bring the whole arcade into your home. <laughs> Market performance The GX4000 was not successful commercially. During its lifespan, software for the system was short in number and slow to arrive, consumer interest was low, and coverage from popular magazines of the time was slight, with some readers complaining about a lack of information regarding the machine. Amstrad Action was one of the few magazines to support the console. Within a few weeks of the initial launch, the system could be bought at discounted prices, and by July 1991 some stores were selling it for as little as £29.99 There were many reasons for the system's lack of success. At this stage the 16-bit Commodore Amiga, and Atari Street, along with earlier 8-bit consoles and computers were already dominating the European video game market, and hype for new 16-bit consoles such as the Mega Drive was starting to rapidly grow. Amstrad also lacked the marketing power to compete with the producers of the Mega Drive released in November 1990 in Europe and eventually the Super NES. On top of this there were also problems with software manufacturing, with many companies complaining that the duplication process was taking months instead of weeks, leading to little software available at launch, and some games being released late or cancelled entirely. Lastly, many GX4000 games were simply CPC games released onto cartridge with minor, or no improvements, which lead to generally unimpressive looking games, and consumer apathy, with many users not prepared to pay £25 for a cartridge game that they could buy for £3.99 on cassette instead. When discussing the market failure of the system, the designer, Cliff Lawson, claimed that the GX4000 was technically, at least as good as the SNES, and that the machine faltered due to a lack of games and Amstrad not having the money to compete with Nintendo and Sega. When asked whether anything could have been done to make the machine a success he replied that more money would have been required to give software houses more incentive to support Amstrad, and that the games and software needed to be delivered sooner. He also remarked that making the machine 16-bit would also have helped. Technical specifications CPU, 8 16 bit Zilog Z80A at 4 MHz ASIC, support for sprites, soft scrolling, programmable interrupts, DMA sound resolution 
Mode 0 to 160 x 200 pixels with 16 colors. Mode 1 to 320 x 200 pixels with 4 colors. Mode 2 to 640 x 200 pixels with 2 color color. Depth 12 bit RGB. Colors available 4096. Maximum colors on screen 32, 16 for background, 15 for sprites, 1 for border. Maximum on screen color counts can be increased in all modes through the use of interrupts. Sprites Number 16 high resolution sprites per line. Sizes 16 by 16. Each sprite can be magnified 2x or 4x in x and y. Colors Each sprite can use up to 15 colors memory. RAM 64 kilobytes. VRAM 16 kilobytes, ROM 32 k audio, three channel stereo i38912 chip, DMIO audio output, 2x digital controller connectors, analog controller port IBM standard, light gun connector RJ11, audio and RGB video output, eight pin DIN, power supply socket from external PSU, power supply socket from monitor. Peripherals Standard controllers The GX4000 controller is similar to popular 8-bit gamepads of the time such as those for the Master System and Nintendo Entertainment System, as well as that for the TURBOGRAFX-16. It contains only two buttons on the actual pad with the pause button located on the console itself, and uses the prevailing de facto standard Atari-style 9-pin connector. Analog joysticks The GX4000 supports the use of analog controllers through its specific IBM standard analog controller port. The controller was not widely supported by software. Lightguns The GX4000 supports the use of a lightgun through its dedicated RJ11 lightgun connector. Multiple third-party lightguns were available, and official releases supported this peripheral. There were two games supporting the use of a lightgun on the GX4000 Skeet Shoot and the Enforcer which were both distributed with a third-party gun. <laughs> games In all, 27 games were produced and distributed for the GX4000. The majority of games were made by UK and French-based companies such as Ocean, Titus, and Lorisiles. Notable games were the pack-in game, Burn and Rubber as well as Robocop 2 Pang, Plesiotting Navy Seals and Switchblade. Many more games were initially announced, such as Toki, Kickoff 2, and OutRun, but later cancelled when the system failed to sell. <laughs> 